Welcome everybody to another episode of From the Threads and today we have uh, the owner of Pastor Mota, Hugh Cole here with us. Dude, intro us lah bro, I give chance lah bro. <laughs> intro us, dude, yeah. like From the Threads, Ben and Isaac here from, ben, from yeah. the Threads. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two ben. hosts and one guest today. Yeah. Um, but before that, I would like to, we would like to apologize for the, because we had received a lot of complaints regarding the previous audio quality for the podcast. So now we actually up our game finally. Cause masters has budget, you know what I'm saying? So they got us like mics and shit. Man, this studio is legit. Yeah. You guys should be here and see it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, speaking yeah. of which, like, Yim did a, did a promo code with 100%. Yeah, man. So I think moving forward, we will try to. Maybe we can pluck one out from Pastor Mota yeah, as well, yeah, you know, yeah, promo yeah. code. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Future, yeah. 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 Okay, come. Uh, so for most of y'all, yeah, you all would know Hugo is like. Uh, Owner of Pastor Mota, major drop, definitely one of the OGs here yeah. in, uh, in the street, scene. Yeah, in yeah. scene. So how is it like so far? And really, congratulations on that LRT thing, man. That was Dude, that was fire, crazy, man. man. That Thanks was crazy. So much, guys. Yeah, Thanks fire, so man. Much, uh, yeah. The I appreciate the the thought behind it, the your plan, like using the LRT and stuff like that. Collaborated with Pastorana, right? Yeah, yeah Pastorana, Touching Go, so far as well. That was lit. Yeah, mm-hmm. all these guys sort of uh, making it happen, you know. So yeah, 2018 is like crazy for you. There's Khalid wearing Pastor Mota yeah. and the mm. LRT thing. So mm. that was crazy, man. And in, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was like, when I first heard about Pastor Mota closing down the Bangsa store, mm. and I was like, oh shit, okay, what's going on now? Then yeah. the LRT came out. So that, boom, that was it crazy. came back man. again, man. <laughs> that was crazy. It came back to the scene again, yeah. man. That's yeah. true. How, how long, but we just want to know, like, how long did it took you guys to plan? Was it like way back, you know, you guys already thought about this? Or yeah. was it, you know? So a lot of times, uh, you know, me together the team, we always have a whole bunch of crazy ideas, lah. You know, yeah. uh, being creatives, I think uh, we all like to dream heaps. So you know, we're constantly tossing ideas, always talking about, hey, you know, what if we can actually do something, or you know, if if maybe the idea sort of sparked from something that we've seen other people do, and you know, how can we sort of tweak that to sort of make it our own? Um, and I guess for this instance, in terms of the fashion show on the LRT, uh, how it all came about was, it was actually Soka, you know, Soka being a rental car company, um, a car, car sharing company, uh, they sort of reached out to us and was like, hey, you know, we have these partners, Prasarana. I didn't even know who Prasarana was, to be honest. You know, you, you've heard of MRT, you heard of LRT, but the people behind it is actually Prasarana, which is like the conglomerate right behind it and um, they wanted to actually get more young people onto the train so they reached out to Soka and Soka reached out to us and they're like hey what do you guys think you know how can we sort of increase ridership on the LRT and we're like shit you know let's let's do this you know we have this idea we thought about it before you know let's let's do this fashion show on the train let's take people on this journey Um, and all this originated maybe in May so it was a good maybe like five months of planning. But the thing is, you know, we only locked down funding for this project maybe a month and a half leading up to it. Whoa. So we did some groundwork. We already knew what we wanted. But I think the real work sort of started one and a half months in. Mm. So that's when we like, okay, everyone sort of drop what you're doing. Let's just focus on this. And the, and the two weeks leading up to it was just like crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's not just us. You know, we had partners involved as well. We you know, the models to even uh, the events company to put it all together because, you know, we're just a small team, man. It's yeah, be, it was, um, yeah. I, I think the cast for the models was crazy. Like, mm. some of the guys they got was very aggressive and mm. wore the clothes, like, really, really well. Mm. And I think the, the part that I like the most is that KL Fashion Week, you know, it's not like KL Fashion Week where there's a dedicated um, runway where you present yeah, the clothes. Yeah, it's pretty much It fixed. was like guerrilla marketing kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. like, I mean, we just want to know what's your thoughts on like, why not showcase in like KL Fashion Week? Like, why choose like a guerrilla marketing kind of style? I mean, aside yeah. from the whole Pasrana being sure. involved and Soka being involved, like, what sure. are your thoughts about the brand Pesto Mota? Like, do you think you want to keep it underground and try to do more of this kind of like guerrilla marketing or yeah. you eventually want to push it to like KL Fashion Week? For yeah, example. I think there's no right or wrong. Um, in regards to like KL Fashion Week, I think those guys are, you know, they've sort of grown over the years and really sort of are driving that. And it's cool to see, you know, cool to see the acceptance of so many streetwear brands because, you know, many years back, it was just, you know, your little more couture style. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you have like streetwear brands involved these days. So that's actually really cool to see. 
But I guess for us, um, you know, we're all about, you know, that's what we try for. We always try to sort of push boundaries. So a lot of times that, yeah, you know, I wouldn't say no to KL Fashion Week. Uh, obviously, this opportunity so happens in terms of timing. It sort of lined up nicely. Uh, we have been talking about participating in future fashion weeks uh, moving forward. Mm -hmm. But I think whatever that we do, you know, we want to make sure that it's something different. You know, it's always, you know, I'm always sort of asking the guys and challenging the guys as well within the team and saying like, hey, how can we do this different? Like, people have seen all this. Well, how can we create something really different that people are going to talk about, people are going to remember? <clears throat> and I think after putting on this show as well, we're like, shit, man. Fuck, you know, like we have to constantly up our game. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know? set the bar too high already for LSU. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so, you know, which I think is good as well because yeah. I think that's, that's much needed, right? We always need to sort of set that bar and how can we continuously sort of improve from there. Um, so the, even the latest project we did, we, we worked with like an Indonesian brand. We sort of traveled from Singapore to Indonesia and even KL as well. And we did parties in uh, Indonesia and KL. And obviously we were a part of Culture Cartel as well down in Singapore. That was sick, like that was really fun. And at the moment now we're talking, hey, you know, why can't we make it a little bit more, even bigger than what we have, you know? Uh, are we able to next time then fly DJs from Malaysia, fly DJs from like, you know, uh, or performers from, you know, Indonesia and everyone sort of perform and sort of champion that Southeast Asian spirit. Mm. Uh, that's what we want. Yeah, and throwing great parties is always uh, festival motors like great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. So seeing the pictures for the launch party, that was that was crazy. Up was at lot ten, right? Oh, lot ten yeah. upstairs yeah, and rooftop. everything, and the pictures. Yeah, oof, that was great. I mean, usually you guys do it at like this bungalow, right? Like the one in uh, Tamansar Heights. Yeah, so we yes. have that bungalow. Uh, that's where we first started off. Mm. Uh, we still have that, but again, you know, we've used it so much. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. always looking for new spaces. Always looking for for something that people have not been to. And it's tough here yeah. in KL. You know, there's only so many options. That's true. But um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Look forward to the next one. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, if you don't mind, could, I, could we know like what do we expect to see in the future? For example, like maybe some sneak peek into like yeah. some any, of the crazy any ideas. Nice collaborations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we said we've done the train. What about a plane, right? Ooh. <laughs> so plane, so Air Asia. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something wow. that you know we are. Uh, you know, we would love to sort of consider uh, mm. something that we want to sort of, I mean, now that we've created like a precedent mm -hmm. with the, the last one. So Tony Fernandez, what's up? Oh, you know, you know, what's up? Yeah, yeah, reach out to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides that as well, um, is to really drive like the focus, you know, like you mentioned before, um, over the past four years, major drop has actually come into the picture and that has sort of taken up a little bit of our time. But moving forward to 2019, um, it's really going to be vessel motor clothing. That's where a lot of the focus is going to be involved in. We're going to talk about doing a lot of bigger sort of shows in terms of presentations that we do, uh, even the line itself. So right now, like every collection, we're dropping about 30 to 40 pieces per collection. But wow. next year, we're looking at, fingers crossed, you know, doubling that. Oh. Uh, and as you mentioned before as well, you know, we shut like the Bunkster store. Mm. But yeah, uh, stay tuned as well. We've got some, oh. some new stuff oh. happening. Nice. Yeah. But I mean, speaking back to Major Drop, I think like, I, I just want to know what your thoughts about like, right now moving this, moving from physical stores right now to just online, how, how has that changed the business so far? I mean, yeah. do you guys still think that like a brick and mortar is quite important for that? Yeah. Or like things like this, you know? For sure. Yeah. Um, definitely, I think brick and mortar still play a big role in the Malaysian landscape at least, you know, um, especially when it comes to streetwear. I think when it comes to streetwear, you talk about the vibe, right? It's all about like the people, it's about, about congregating, it's about the community, it's about bringing people together. So, you know, moving forward, I don't think a brick and mortar space would be, it will still be used for selling, but I don't think that'll be the sole purpose. The sole purpose is really gonna be activations. Mm -hmm. Activations, working with people, uh, sort of showcasing what the brand's all about. You only can showcase that much online. Yeah, that's um, true. But the brick and mortar space is where really uh, I think people need to sort of push yeah I think people need to like experience that connection the, yeah the culture the lifestyle yeah. of the brand I mean, so I, they can relate to it in a way yeah right? I mean all of us connected you know yeah. digitally and you know through Instagram and all that but yeah. nothing sort of beats everyone sort of coming together and making new friends and you know and that's where collaboration sort of take place it's always like you know at these sort of parties or at these sort of events that we see a certain something we say hey shit you know oh my goodness like 
oh, you did this? That's cool, man. Like, you know, hey, can we work together? Let's see how we can sort of like move forward from here. And yeah. that's what we're always looking for. I see. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of collaborations, though, you are like crazy. This brand, Pesto Mortar, has collaborated with plenty of other brands yeah. like Royal Slang. Royal Slang. Oh, that is what, definitely one of the biggest ones. Like, yeah. uh, we just want to know about your thoughts about collaboration. It's, in my opinion, I think streetwear is probably one of the few facets of fashion that mm. does collaboration the most. Mm. So far, mm. we just want to know like what is like your thoughts about it. What are the struggles of it? Usually, is it tough to like find this like balance? You know, sometimes I know it's tough where because both parties yes, have like both opinion. parties are involved. Yeah. You know, for and sure, like yeah. it's hard to. I mean, everyone wants to have a little bit of their identity into that yeah, product. Sure, you know, yeah. you can sometimes kind of struggle. Like you know, okay, when is it too pastel mortar? When is it too mm. royal slang? Or you get what I mean? Sure. So, so I think um, yeah, over the years as well, like. Uh, I think that's something that we realize. It's taken us, you know, a good five to eight years to realize that if we want to be successful, we can't do it alone. You know, I think over here in Malaysia, a lot of the mentality people have is like, oh, I'm just going to hang out with my group of friends. I just want to do things, you know, with the people that I know. But if you actually look overseas, if you actually look, you know, to the States in Europe, whenever I go there, everyone's friends, man. You know, even though they may be doing different things, you know, like some people catering to a totally different market, and you know, another guy who's doing something really niche. But end of the day, you know, people sort of come together. And I think that is really the recipe for success, especially in this day and age. You know, because it's even getting a lot more competitive with, you know, Instagram, with all the social media and everything. Everyone is, you know, having, you're not fighting with the people here in Malaysia anymore, you're fighting worldwide. Mm. And the only way to sort of make it is that it's strength in numbers, right? Yeah, work together. Right? Yeah, work together. And like what you said about the Royal Slango aspect, <clears throat> but you know, how, um, how, you know, how do you sort of meet in the middle? You think, I think I learned a lot, particularly from this recent collaboration with it, with, uh, Ageless Galaxy, which is from mm. Jakarta. Shout out Ageless. <laughs> <laughs> um, because both of us are actually very strong in nature in terms of our character, mm-hmm. you know, everyone wants it our way and everyone thinks that, oh, you know, I've been around longer, I should mm-hmm. sort of have this or or I've got storefronts, I should have this. But I think in any collaboration, there's always one driving force. And I think like in a relationship, right? You know, if you're like sort of dating a girl, it's always like this push and pull. Mm. You know, if you want it your way the whole time, that's when the partnership's gonna break. Yep. So same thing actually goes with, you know, all this sort of brand marrying. And mm-hmm. uh, when we worked with Ageless in particular, um, one of the, the co-founders, Tamish, uh, he's like really strong in terms of his character. And he was like, you know, I want this, I want that. And I was like, okay, you know what? I told the guys as well, like, let this guy drive, you know? I think he's on the same, same wavelength as us. Mm. Uh, obviously, when we're not happy about certain things, we voice it out. Mm. You know, if there are certain things that we, we feel really strongly about, we make sure that we sort of power through and get it our way. But if not, let him drive. That's you true. know, some, sometimes, you know, we'll drive like the Royal Stangle one. It was all pretty much us. They played the supporting role. <laughs> In this case, uh, for for this recent one that we did, mm. he drove. We just played the supporting role. Mm. So I think so it's uh, like it needs that balance. Pretty much taking turns for each. Yeah, yeah, it needs all the take turns <coughs> la. If yeah. everyone wants to do their own shit, yeah, that's that's how shit goes down the drain, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Speaking of like Malaysian mentality and stuff, uh, what do you think of like kids these days or youngsters these days have the mm. mentality of saying that, oh. Why chose local brands instead of overseas one when the price is pretty much the same? same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think that's something that we have not, from Pestle Motor side, we haven't shown enough, you know. Uh, For all the guys working on the industry, you guys know how tough it is. You know, you guys know how much things are going up in cost. You guys know, like, the amount of struggle, sweat, tears that we sort of put into this shit. It's not easy. Mm. So even more so, you know, if these guys can't really see that, it's mm. also our duty to sort of, you know, educate people, you know, showcase to them, like, man, fuck all these other brands, bro. Like, all these other American brands, you know, how many thousands of people are rocking them? Yep. You know, but the local brands, you know, all these smaller niche ones, there's only, you only a, a small, a, a small, fair few of you. Yep. I think that way, it's like, that's the appeal. That's why you're charging that amount. Okay, so we just want to know, so like, um, the streetwear landscape back yeah. then and now, you know, as we were discussing, like price point has been very different. Mm. Like people's tolerance of price is very different, and how that has 
change. And uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Malaysia is quite a unique um, market. I think we're kind of in this like really weird financial bubble where when it's too expensive, we can't afford it. But yeah. when it's too cheap, people don't want, people it. Don't want it. You get mm -hmm. what I mean? So we're kind of always stuck in this like mid range that everyone's kind of like still figuring out. I think a lot of retail brands in Malaysia, be it street or not, are still trying to figure out that bubble. And uh, we just want to know what you think about it. Like back then, now, the tolerance and how this whole being in this weird bubble kind of thing like affects yeah. your business and in the future, you know? Sure, you know, um, uh, this is a chat that I always have with my team as well, like in terms of like pricing. You know, I mean, back eight years ago, dude, we're selling our stuff for 45 ringgit. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, we've come a yeah. long way. Yeah, man. Currently selling about anywhere from like 90 to 110 for some pieces or even mm. like 119 for the last one. Um, and yeah, you know, that, that constant shift. But I guess the main thing is always, you know, how do you sort of justify that shift? You know, uh, you know, are you, you sort of changing the quality? Have you put in more thought, effort mm. into it? I think that's what people actually want to see. If not, you know, people will sort of read through you and just go like, oh, fuck this guy, man. It's like, <laughs> constantly he's trying to make a buck for me, right? <laughs> that's it's right. like, you know, I need a break. Um, so that's something that we're always sort of thinking about. But I think you're right, you know, here in the Malaysian landscape, it's tough for brands. Um, you know, number one, Malaysia itself, not that many people, you mm -hmm. know, first yeah. of all, not that many people to start off with, and then you sort of narrow it down to people like the urban population who is like really into streetwear. Mm. And then after that, you break it down now and again, you know, into like the age group that you're targeting. And then you have to sort of fight within that pool with like mm. everyone else. So that's tough. Like, so a lot of times I guess for us, um, Malaysia, no doubt, always going to be like home and where we're from. And this is always what we're going to be championing. But that being said, you know, where we hope to sort of make our money is actually from outside. So mm. like if you talk about like the US market, or we don't even need to go that far. Don't even talk about the US market, talk about Singapore itself. You know, that's like low hanging fruit right there. It's down south, four hours drive, bam. You, you launch a 119 ringgit t-shirt, people say, yo, you cheap, man. Mm. <laughs> say like, you guys trying to do a mass market or what? <laughs> that's true, that's true. You know, so it's sort of starting there. But the funny mm. thing is, you know, look at, Thailand itself, right? Mm. I think it's the education as well. <laughs> like the education for for people, um, you know, sort of purchase, that sort of thing. Like in Thailand, people, like brands and st itself, you know, they don't sell the stuff actually cheap. It's actually expensive. Yeah. And people can afford. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know where to get their money from, to be honest. Because some of these things, you know, they're so, so expensive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sort of moving forward, I think for, for us itself would be you know, focusing on Southeast Asia because this is our roots, you know, so making sure that we're available within these uh, neighboring countries and all that. But at the same point in time, uh, making money from, you know, your Europeans, your, your sort of US based markets, because mm. it's cheap and it's like times four. Yeah. Point four. Yeah, right no, Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. But I think going back to the recent podcast from Sneakonomics that Julian did, I think now people are just weird, man. Like Julian did mention that saying nowadays, uh, I mean, his guests mentioned saying that like nowadays, it doesn't matter about the price point. If it's expensive, they like it, mm. they buy it, They'll man. Drop it, it's, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's different now, you know, like price point is a yeah. 50-50 thing now. You get yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's true. But I think at the end of the day, again, that's only for a small group of people. Yeah. You know, that's just a handful of people who can, who can actually do that. Mm. But still, you know, I mean, I guess it's all depend. It all depends on you know what exactly do you want your brand to be. You know, mm. do you only want it for the elite? You know, yeah. Then you know that's the sort of pricing that you're gonna chase for, and then you're gonna have those other people who's gonna be like, you know what, I'm gonna save up one year just for this particular damn item. Mm. Mm. And the other hand, you know, there's like, hey, you know, we want, um, you know, we want a brand for all. And mm. you know, if that's the case, obviously, you know, you can't be charging crazy amounts. It has the barrier of entry into the brand has to be a reasonable amount yeah. that people can sort of buy in, or even like the tiering of the products. I mean, you look at all these other sort of huge brands, right? You got like, let's say, the Indidex group from like Spain itself. Look at like, uh, you know, your Zara's and all that. Like Zara's like mass market; everyone can sort of buy in. But if you want something a little more exclusive, you got like Mossimo, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. So. You know, even for us as well, you know, we're always sort of toyed with the mark, with that idea of like, how can we sort of um, tier our products so that, yeah, you know, we want to sort, we want all spectrums of the market. 
you want those people you know who pay big bucks for it really extremely limited uh, quantities and you know you're like one out of like how many millions of people out here who have it and then on the other end of the spectrum hey you know what i'm just getting into street where you know i want something like that and to have product for those sort of people as well that's true so i'm guessing we'll be expecting a pastel mortar black label or premium <laughs> label soon right isn't yeah. it yeah, so yeah like cardigans coats and stuff oh, that would yeah, be cool. yeah 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 sure. things man that's true so I think um I think let's let's talk about a little bit of some naughty stuff lah, okay like oh. these are uh, I think uh, I th- I think twenty eighteen has been a very good run for Pastel Mortar there were some up and downs mm. I'm not gonna lie but uh, I mean there's two things we want to talk about sure really. uh, we've got that Proton Saga thing okay. yeah there yeah. yeah. so, so I I I don't know whether have you heard about this guy that's been tagging your social Ooh, media yes. yeah hey, Jordan yo, man. Course, like, man okay 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 I feel that it's it's good that you are here to like say your point of view on things because you can't express much like for yourself through social media and stuff. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah so it's a good opportunity, like, I guess. I think we'll start with the Toron Saga one first. Calm down, man. Yeah, let's Toron go, Saga. let's go. I, first of all, before we even start about Toron Saga, I, I saw your article that you, that you wrote for the, in, yep. in your website. and, and Masters even wrote about it. Yeah, Masters also wrote about yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, we, I noticed that it was so concise and everything. I was like, Okay, now I'm a bit confused. Like, what's mm-hmm. going on here? You know, like, yeah. who's lying? You know, I'm not, I'm exactly. not gonna no, say no, no, like, you know, good, like, man. yeah. So we just want to know like, what really, really, really happened. You know, and mm, like sure. how it just kind of like blew up that yep. way. Sure. And also, we want to know your thoughts about like, I, I, I personally think that anything in this world is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. And mm, like, sounds familiar, bro. <laughs> sounds familiar. <yeah. laughs> I mean, everything is a copy, right? I mean, like, you. You can't really say that you claim that, for example, like this mug, you know, I created this mug. You probably created adaptations of the yeah. mug. Yeah. You got what I mean? So like, I, I just want to know what your thoughts about that as well. And sure. Like, yeah. Maybe I'll just give you, I'll give my thoughts after. I'll just mm. give you the run on the scenario yeah, first. Cool. Okay, let's go. Um, so all this actually happened, uh, okay, how this all actually started was, I remember I was actually in Bali, I was in the airport. Mm. Okay. And uh, I was looking, I was waiting in line to sort of check my bags in, flying back from Bali to KL. And I came across, like someone tagged me to something on Instagram. And I looked at it. And the first thing it said there, it was actually one of, I can't remember the, the gentleman's name who actually did the Proton Saga design. Mm. But it was one of his friends who tagged me to it and tagged his design and said something along the lines of like, yo, like, oh my goodness, like, how, how the fuck can you guys, like, do this? Like, you know, you stole his idea. He's, like, a big fan of, like, Basel and Moda. How could you do this? I was an idiot. The first thing I did was I let emotions take over. So mm. when I read that, nothing actually came to it because that was around the Medeka time. And mm. that was also, like, I think the first one or two days that we released our Medeka capsule. That's correct. And part of a Medeka capsule was pretty much two designs. One of it was the Proton Saga. The other one was the Unit DT. Yes. Um, so this, when they saw that, this is what sort of sparked them to sort of reach out and sort of post this. So they obviously spoke about it, you know, prior to sort of putting this up. And when I saw that, I was like, shit, man, fuck this, you know, these guys, like, fuck, just because they've done a Proton Saga, you know, before, you know, they're, they're thinking like I'm copying them or we're copying them. So straight away, without thinking, without, you know, any business sense, I decided to like, you know, write back. Mm-hmm. And I wrote back at whatever was on my in my head at the point of time, and and what I said was was something along the lines of like yo like you know this idea for Saga you think you own it like you know we we did this like such a long time ago at the same point of time it's it doesn't belong to anyone you know everyone has their own interpretation so happened yeah. yeah yours is a side profile as well ours is a side profile but it looks different as well and I think I was using like uh, examples of like the Twin Towers and KLCC how so many brands have sort of you know used that yep. as a talking piece. Or you know uh, a p uh, uh, center graphic, you know in their collections or whatever it may be, and then obviously you know bombarded with a whole bunch of other comments like fuck you, fuck you. I was like wow, okay these guys are you know pretty yeah yeah, 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 pretty angry man. I was like shit okay, and what happened then was that they I think they wrote something along lines of like oh this guy I think his name's Hazik, uh Hazik texted you before. And that sort of sparked me to sort of look into my DMs. Mm. I went to my DMs and I scrolled through my stuff and I found his his DM to me. Mm. And this was easily maybe like, I don't know, three, four months back. Mm-hmm. And he said something along the lines of, 
yo Hugh like check out this design I'm a big fan of Vessel and Moda I was like fuck dude that's sick mm. and I never replied <laughs> <laughs> okay. so this is like 3-4 months ago <laughs> yeah. right like I, it completely slipped my mind like yeah, you know yeah, that yeah. happens and so I was like okay fuck it right and then you know at the same point in time on our end you know this actually we actually had this idea about doing this Proton Saga a good one year back or one year plus back and this was actually done by a particular designer from the UK who was mm. helping us out. Her name's Becky. And she designed this graphic of the Proton Saga. And this thing has actually been sitting in our archive of like libraries for longest time. And I was, and then, you know, as a, and I have a shit. It's like a bowling shit. And it mm. has all these prints of Proton Saga. I wear it all the fucking time. I fucking love it. Because it's only one of one. Mm. And everywhere, every time I wear it, you know, people go like, fuck, is that Proton Saga? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. You know, something along those lines. So leading up to elect, uh, leading up to Madeka, especially with the change of the government, I was like, okay, what should we do this year? And this was easily like in March as well. Um, you know, I was like, okay, you know, Tun is back in power. What has he done? We have always played with the whole Malaysia flag, Tunku Abdul Rahman, mm -hmm. hands in the air, bandera, all that kind of thing. They said, hey, maybe we should do this person saga. <laughs> so I told the guys, told my designers, okay, grab that graphic out of this thing, and just apply it to t-shirts and apply it to the shirts as well and let's sort of get it out so that was already you know this was really happening at the same point in time this thing happened yeah you know it was an idiot of me to actually forget completely forget mm -hmm. that this guy had dm me because even if i was in this position i would have thought the same to be mm -hmm. honest like this motherfucker copied my shit man like i told him about it mm -hmm. so i don't blame him mm -hmm. but at the end of the day i think what's important is that you know i guess to hear people out i mean whether you believe it or not you know, I've really done my part. Mm -hmm. I apologize in regards to, you know, sorry if it came out that way. But um, yeah, this is the story. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I definitely agree with you. Like, I think um, it really could have come off in a sense that people feel like you took his design because yeah. you kind of like, oh yeah, that's a great design, man. The kind of thing yeah. and then you forget to reply. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the next thing you know, that thing came yeah. out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, I would and be triggered as well. Yeah, man. I think anyone would have been triggered. So I guess, yeah, I think there's a little bit of like mis mishap yeah, sure. on your end there. And also that he also was emotional as well. Sure. I, I understand, you know, it's your design. You want it to be out there and yeah. everything. And now you see it's like being, being something else entirely. I think it's always the case as well, right? It's yeah. always like, you know, he was the underdog. Yes, People always yes, root for yeah. the underdog. I mean, I always do anyway. Yeah. You know, you hear all these stories about these bigger brands sort of ripping off all these independent designers. It happens. And yeah. it's exposed, mm -hmm. right? And people yeah. see it. Shout but, out Zara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zara as well, right? But yeah, it's, I guess it's important. Yeah, number one, to sort of hear, you know, what other people have to say. And uh, but, but one thing I think, you know, us Malaysians, you know, I just want to sort of re-iterate sort of iterate that again is that, man, I think a lot of us, we're just too, I don't know whether we're sheltered or mm -hmm. we're not exposed or, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like what you said just now, right? Everyone get inspired by something. Yeah. Doesn't mean just because, you know, you, you used like a design of a mug before or used something like, I can't do it. Fuck that. We started this whole Malaysian Pride of Southeast Asia shit. Like, you know, we started championing Malaysia Pride through our t-shirts. Fuck, how many brands have done that right now? That's true. Fuck, I haven't gone out there and said, yo, fuck you, you're stealing our ideas. Mm. No, true. I didn't. That's true. You know, and That's all of us as well, so. Because it's like an icon, man. It's like, it represents Malaysia in a way. Takan, you say like, oh shit, I put the KLCC towel on my freaking t-shirt and then should I credit what, the, the builder of the KLCC? Yeah, exactly, man. I think, yeah. yeah, if you want, like, I think for, for all you grow, you should really credit you yeah. should ask yeah. Proton Saga for that issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, like, like I said, you know, everything's sort of like a copy of a copy of a copy. Mm. And the adaptations of it can be different, you know. And yep. how you interpret it is very, very important, yeah. I guess. Unless you copy, like, directly, like a mm, copy. Yeah. That's different, you know what I mean? Right? Yeah, exactly. But uh, we just want to know, like, um, what do you think of, like, Sheldon? Yeah. Like, how do you think of Sheldon? You know, like, even, like, um, I'm actually waiting for a day to actually have a proper conversation with him, Martin. Yeah, honest. man. So, yeah. And I'm also we waiting for the day for him to sort of grow up. Yeah, that's Grow true. up and actually to, to sort of look back at what he's written and, mm. I don't know, maybe he be the judge then. Mm, that's um, true. You know, Sheldon, to be honest, when I he first used to met work him, in Pastor Mota, right? He used to work at League of Captains or Cafe. Uh, yes, correct, yeah. So, yeah, so the story goes, right, I, I never hired him. Mm. Um, my partner Daniel who was actually running the cafe hired him 
and he was actually helping us sell some gear upstairs. He was doing stock take like, dude, this guy's like, you know, back, back when he first started, easily a good five years ago, or whatever it may be. Really quiet, timid guy, you know, already had sort of like long hair. It was like, it was a, it was a cool kid, like, you know, mm-hmm. sort of coming in and, you know, asking him to help me sort of do things. And at that point in time as well, he's helping his girlfriend, like, do shit. So he'll come by the office and he'll invite me, like, okay, you come to my, like, I don't know, my girlfriend's grad show and all that kind of thing. I was like, yeah, man, cool. Out of the blue, one day, bam, comes oh. out like a complete alter ego, like, fuck this, fuck that, fuck these guys. Um, I think for us, like, when I look back at it and I think about it, I think it's good. Like, you know, I think it is also like a rain check for us. I, I, would, I wouldn't deny that over these past eight years that we have somewhat swayed. We have somewhat, you know, like, I think a lot of times being eight years in business, it's all about longevity. Mm. How do we keep this thing, right? How do I, how do I continue, like, doing Pestle and Moda for, like, whatever it may be, 100 years? Something like that. You always need to sort of think about the money as mm. well, you know? And I think sometimes you do get carried away with that. You do mm. think a lot about the business aspect mm-hmm. and you forget the brand. Yeah. You know? But over the years, you know, I've had... I've been very grateful to have, you know, many other teammates within the team who always sort of drives me back. Even like this recent trip to like Jakarta and to see all these other people, like when you hang out with other people who are doing it, like super passionate about it. Don't get me wrong, like I'm super bloody passionate about this shit, you know, but what I look for, streetwear may not excite me completely these days, but the business angle of this, you know, Mm -hmm. building the business, building a family, building the people within the business. You know, because to be honest, I think now I'm really 33, man. I feel somewhat irrelevant in the scene. Mm. You know, there's a certain way like, yeah, I, I rock my Yeezy from time to time. <laughs> but you know, there's only a certain element. Like, I like going for like dinner parties. I like wearing my suit. Yeah. You know, I like yeah. that shit. You know, but at the same point in time, even though I like the idea behind streetwear, I mean, not like streetwear per se, but I <laughs> love like the community. I love the music. I love how people are so raw. <laughs> I love that element. So that has shifted over the past eight years that we've been doing this. And maybe that has somewhat sort of swayed the brand along the way. But I hope that, you know, we're able to sort of bring that back. Mm. I think for me, that was always the main thing. Like we always use the tagline, proud Southeast Asia. Everything that we do right now really needs to resonate around that tagline. And uh, that's what we're really going to drive. So going back to the whole Sheldon thing. Uh, yeah, he came out, you know, saying, oh, these guys, okay, you know, I used to fuck with them, but now, like, you know, fuck them, they're, like, doing this that I don't like, blah, blah, blah. Sure, everyone's, you know, has their own opinion. And yeah. I think they're entitled gonna to hate, their man. own opinion. <laughs> you know? Haters gonna hate. But yeah. I don't think he is completely wrong, just that the way he expressed his emotions and mm. opinions is quite... Quite intense. Quite intense, yeah. 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 Quite intense. Yeah. But probably maybe I, I assume that the way he... The way he's talking right now, I think maybe there was some misunderstanding in between that. Yeah. That wasn't clarified. I think yeah. he didn't clarify with you guys and you know, yeah, you don't just... obviously don't know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. You know, I think So and... so I guess yeah, that's the main thing, right? Why is he actually so angry at it? Yeah. I have no idea. Mm. That's something, you know, if you can extract that out of him. Yeah, I think maybe maybe we can do another <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we you actually want I mean? to do like, <laughs> Yeah, like, I think, I think, I think, I, I don't know, would you, do you think you'd be ever interested to do a podcast with him? Like, just to know, like, we can invite him. I mean, if, if he's able to actually hold a proper conversation on a certain level, I'm cool with that. Oh, you, you know, heard that, but... Sheldon, you heard that, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. You know, but if this is going to be there, it's going to be a shouting match. Fuck that, lah. Bro. No, yeah, la, I'm 33, that's, la. that's true. I'm over that's that true. shit. Yeah. Dude, you know? he's a decent person, man. The time we shot him and stuff, we hang, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, he's a decent I'm, person to talk to, bro. He's cool and shit. I'm not going to lie. Like, I manage this brand called Stussy KL. Yeah. And uh, this is a little bit of insider info. We used him for one of our promo videos. And um, everything went well in the shoot, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But I do hear that he... He has this thing against Pastor Morta mm. and everything. So I was in my back of, in the back of my head. I was also wondering, will he ever say something about Stussy since we are since I'm managing the brand as yeah. well? And turns out after the shoot, he did comment like some weird comments on our post. Really? So yeah, he did. He did. And mm. um, so I, I was a little bit disappointed. It was nothing very very offensive. Yeah. So I was just wondering, is it because generally, you know, he he's embodying that whole fuck the system you I get what I mean like you know exactly, maybe that's yeah. his persona I also thought, did thought about that so I don't know you know I think I think we just have to find it out one day 
Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If you, if you want the if you want that sort of uh, answers, yeah, I got reach out soon because yeah, as years go by, you know, everyone sort of grows up, lah. That's true. So, that's true. But we'll I think happens. Hugh, I'm really, really glad that uh, what you mentioned earlier about that whole eight years and you sway in the business and everything. Yeah. I not gonna lie. I mean, I knew about Pastor Mota when I was in my high school years. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I back think when, it was really cool. Back when the floral pocket tee was, yes, 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 was a yes. trend, man. They said, uh, yeah. And I was really, really happy uh, as well because like pride of pride of uh, Southeast Asia. Asia. Yeah. And that that that's a very very good tagline even for back then as well. But I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like. I do think that the brand has swayed a little bit, but yeah. with the LRT thing, man, I, I was a believer again, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I really hope that down the road, you do more good work. And I mean, 2018 has been really, really good to you. And I think that this podcast, we're really, really glad to have you on yeah, this man. podcast to talk yeah. to you about all yeah. these things. And we hope that we'll be able to see you and maybe get some... Um, tickets to some of the show. <laughs> yes, okay, we, we, we need yeah, some of that, right? Isn't yeah. it? I mean, like, can't be Brian getting all, yeah, man. all know, the fame, man. Okay, okay, I'm going to show some love. All yeah. good. Make sure you yeah, guys yeah. come support. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, Pastor yeah, Mota. Shout out, Pastor Thanks, Mota. Boys, you know? So, thank you so much again for the po- for the podcast. And uh, we really, really enjoyed this talk. Yeah, with thank you. you for your time, man. Thank you for your time. Thanks. So, and also, uh, do follow us on Spotify. We are now on Spotify, man. Like, Finally, yeah, going international, man. Yeah, man. yeah going yeah. international. So once again, thanks a lot, Hugo, and this is from the threads from Ben and Isaac. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Woo-hoo. Peace.